So I'm a full-time freelance journalist, which means I'm always hustling for a good story. And that involves trawling through a lot of obscure and sort of offbeat websites and also a lot of foreign press. And one day, a few years ago, I came across a little news item about the murder of a farmer in India. But the motive for this murder just seemed completely bizarre to me. It was such a weird and compelling story that I got Wired magazine to send me to India to get to the bottom of it. What happened was this. Late one morning in July of 2013, three men on a motorcycle pulled up outside the house of a farmer named Paliram Chohan. That's his picture up there. They were all wearing kerchiefs. They, two of the men got off the bike. They opened the back door of the house. They slipped into a bedroom on the other side where Paliram was lying on a bed taking a nap in the middle of the day. Bang, bang, bang. They shot him dead. Paliram's son and his daughter-in-law came running in just in time to see the killers jump back on the bike and take off. Now, even though the killers were wearing masks, the family had no doubt about who they were. And that's because for 10 years, Paliram had been fighting against a gang of criminals in his village that were stealing one of the village's most precious resources, which turns out to be one of the most sought after commodities of the 21st century, sand. That's right. Paliram Chohan was killed over sand. And he wasn't the first or the last. In fact, hundreds of people have been killed over sand in the last several years. So I wanted to find out why in the world did these people care so much about sand? Right? It seems like the most trivial thing in the world. What makes sand so important that it's worth killing for? So my reporting very quickly led me to part of the answer, and it is this. Sand is actually the most important solid substance in the world. It's the literal foundation of modern civilization. And that's because it's what our cities are made out of. Look around you right now. That floor underneath your feet, probably these walls around us and the ceiling overhead, they're made at least partly out of concrete. Just like every modern building that goes up anywhere in the world today, from Beijing to Lagos, is made out of concrete. Right? Every apartment block, every shopping center, every office tower, concrete. And concrete is nothing but sand and gravel that's been stuck together. All the roads that connect all those buildings, also made out of concrete. Every window in every one of those buildings is also made from sand. Glass is nothing but sand that's been melted down. The silicon chips that power your computers and your cell phones, also made from sand. And it doesn't stop there. Sand is with you in practically every moment of your day. Sand is in paper. It's used to make toothpaste, cosmetics, paint, wine. Even the elastic band in your underwear is derived from sand. I just love telling people that they have sand in their underwear. <laughs> in short, no sand, no modern civilization. And guess what? We are starting to run out. There is so much demand for sand in today's world that we are stripping riverbeds and beaches bare, ripping up farmlands and forests to get at the sand that's underneath it. And people are being imprisoned, tortured, and murdered all over sand. So let me take a step back for a second, just explain what is sand, what are we even talking about here? So the word sand just means little pieces, grains, of, of any hard material. So sand can be made of any kind of rock, it can be crushed up shells, it can be lots of things. But about 70% of all sand grains in the world and the stuff that we as human beings use the most, that we depend on, are quartz. And basically what those quartz grains are is they're little tiny pieces of mountains. So the wind and the rain and other environmental factors are constantly wearing away at mountains and other geological formations, breaking off little pieces, grains. And those grains then get washed down by the rains into rivers, and the rivers carry them far and wide. So sand builds up on the bottom of the rivers, on the banks of the rivers, and in the places where the rivers meet the sea, beaches, right? And over centuries and millennia, rivers change their courses, so you end up with big deposits of sand left on what has become dry land. Now we dig up that sand, we mine it all over the world on a titanic scale. We dig up about 50 billion tons of sand and gravel every single year. That's more than enough to cover the entire state of California. 
In fact, we use more sand than any other natural resource except for water and air. And the key reason for that is this. We are building cities on a scale and at a pace that has never happened before in human history. And that's because every year there are more and more people on the planet and more and more of them are moving out of the countryside and into cities, especially in the developing world. It's the same thing that happened in this country in the early 1900s, only now, Instead of millions of people moving into cities over a couple, three decades, we're talking about hundreds of millions moving in just a few, the space of a few years. To give you an idea, in 1950, about 750 million people lived in cities all over the world. Today, that number is 4.2 billion, and it's still growing. In fact, we are adding the equivalent of eight New York cities every single year. All right? Now, just one office building takes thousands of tons of concrete. So imagine how much goes into building whole cities. Well, it's enough concrete. We are using enough concrete every single year to build a wall 88 feet wide and 88 feet high right the way around the equator. Here's my favorite mind blower statistic. China, all by itself, has used more cement in the last few years than the United States used in the entire 20th century. But just think about that for a second. Every building, every road, every dam, every airport that was built in this country between 1900 and 2000, imagine all that concrete. China has used more than that just since the beginning of this decade. But how do we get that sand? Well, it really, it runs the gamut. In some places, you have multinational corporations sucking it up from the bottom of rivers and lakes and from the bottom of the ocean in gigantic ships, dredges. The biggest of them are longer than a 60-story apartment building tipped over on its side. They can hold about 80,000 tons of sand. Goes from that all the way to at the other end of the spectrum, you have just industrious locals with shovels literally digging out their local riverbanks. Put it all together, Worldwide, sand extraction is an industry worth about $130 billion. Now, all of that causes a lot of problems. First of all, massive environmental damage. When you suck up that much sand from the bottom of a river or a lake, which is how we get most of the sand that we use for construction, the first thing is you completely wipe out whatever was living on the bottom of that river or lake. You've just annihilated the habitat of whatever fish, shellfish, plant life was down there. Second thing is when you're sucking it all up, you also stir up all the silt and the muck and the mud, whatever was down there, you stir it up and it clouds up the water for what can be a very long time and for what can be a very large area. And all that stirred up silt in the water can suffocate whatever's swimming in that water, fish, porpoises, dolphins, anything that was living in that water. Third thing is that clouded up water doesn't allow sunlight to get through the water down to whatever plant life is living down on the bottom of that, of that river or that lake. That kind of dredging has wiped out enormous numbers of fish, birds, shellfish, and, and endangered species all over the world. It's also destroyed coral reefs, mangrove forests, and, and seagrass beds. And then there's crime. There is so much demand that sand is being stolen, including by this guy. Yeah, the CEO of United Airlines just last year got nailed for stealing sand for his $7 million Florida beach house. He wasn't happy, yeah. He wasn't happy with the sand that was out in front, so he just went and stole a bunch of sand from the public beach next door. <laughs> as crazy as that is, that's actually only the tip of the iceberg. In, in Jamaica, in Russia, in other places, thieves have stolen entire beaches. In fact, there is a worldwide black market for sand. In dozens of developing countries, Straight up criminal gangs are illegally mining tons of the stuff to sell. How do these guys get away with it? Well, they do the same thing that organized crime does everywhere. They pay off government officials and bribe police to leave them alone. And if you really get in their way, they will kill you. Which brings us back to Pali Ram Chohan. What happened with him is one day, 
a bunch of criminals came to his village and just seized about 200 acres of the village's land. They ripped up all the crops that were growing there, stripped out all the topsoil, and started digging up the sand to sell to developers in New Delhi, which is just about an hour away. So Paliram was kind of a leader in this village, and he tried to get them to stop, he organized his fellow villagers to, to protest. He went to the courts. He went to the police. He couldn't get anyone to take action. But he did start to get under the miners' skin. And at a certain point, they took him aside and said, look, you are really starting to annoy us. You're bad for business. Cut it out, or we're going to kill you. Paliram didn't stop. In fact, he reported that threat to the police. Three days later, he was shot dead. In India, they call these kind of gangs the Sand Mafia, right? which sounds kind of funny to us here. But actually, these guys are really no joke. Hundreds of people have been killed in India over sand uh, just in the last few years. And I mean government officials, police officers, journalists, people hacked to death with machetes, people burned to death. That kind of violence is at its worst in India, but that is not the only place by any means. In Gambia, in Kenya, in Indonesia, and in many other places, people have been assaulted and tortured and murdered all over sand. If our dependence on sand is causing all this environmental damage and all this deadly violence around the world, well, what can we do? Well, first thing to know is, unfortunately, we can't use all the sand that's in the deserts. All that sand is pretty much completely useless to us. And the reason for that is desert sand has been eroded over thousands and millions of years by wind, and that's made the grains the wrong shape. It's made the grains kind of smooth and round. As you can see on the left side, there, those are desert grains. You see how they're kind of almost like little balls, as opposed to the kind of grains you find on the bottom of rivers, which are more angular, have more corners. So these ones lock together to make nice, stable concrete. These ones won't. It's like the difference between trying to build something out of a stack of marbles as opposed to out of a stack of little bricks. So all that desert sand, forget about it. Well, can we just make more sand? Yeah, we can. You can crush up rock and smash it down to individual little grains and use that. Two problems with that. It's much more expensive than using naturally occurring sand. And again, the shape isn't always quite right. With artificial sand like that, the shape doesn't really work for all the applications that we need it for. Well, can we use something else instead of sand? There are a lot of researchers around the world working on replacing sand in concrete with different things, with shredded plastic, bamboo, other things. But those are all pretty much in the laboratory stage at this point. They're all probably all going to help, but ultimately, there's only one long-term solution, and it's this. We have to start using less sand. And for that matter, we have to start using less of everything. Right? This is not news. We're burning too much oil. We're pumping out too much fresh water. We're taking too many fish out of the oceans. We're cutting down too many trees. And now come to find out we're using too much sand. These are not separate problems. These are all symptoms of the same problem, which is that we are simply consuming too much. There just aren't enough resources in the world for us to continue the way that we live, at least here in the developed world. And that problem is only getting worse because there, of the population of the world keeps on growing. There's already 7 billion of us on this planet, and we are on track very soon to hit 9 billion people. We have got to find ways to live our lives and build our cities that consume less, ways that are more sustainable. So how can we do that? Well, one example is, let's try and reduce car ownership. And people say, well, what, what does car ownership have to do with sand? Well, think about it. If we could reduce car ownership by just 10%, for example, not only would you save on all the carbon emissions and traffic and all the other issues that come with cars, but you would also reduce by 10% the number of new houses that need garages and driveways. You also could reduce the size of your freeways. You also wouldn't need as many parking spaces. You wouldn't need to build parking structures quite as big. You could shrink the size of those things. That right there would save millions of tons of concrete and therefore sand. Those are the kinds of solutions that we've got to be looking for. And the good news there is we're actually starting to make a little progress on that front with the spread of ride-sharing services, bike-sharing services, public transit, all the rest of it. 
Those are the kinds of solutions that we need that don't just address the, the issue of overuse of one resource, but that address the central issue of overconsumption. We need, in short, to find ways to build a world for 9 billion people on a foundation more solid than sand. Thank you very much.